loved too hard, maybe I tried too hard, maybe I tried for too long, but at the end of the day, my biggest crime is that I fell in love and I meant what I said and I really, really worked for it to work out. And it just didn't. And I think about this a lot as I see this increase in content that like crucifies women for staying in these like less than ideal relationships with guys who just suck. And I'm Our sister here is saying that why do some people create content to shame women for falling in love? Like what is the essence of you shaming a woman that was in a relationship, she really loved the man, she really wants to make the relationship work knowing fully well that it is not a good relationship it's a bad relationship but she's there because she's in love and she wants to make it work why do people create content to shame those women let me roll this clip for you all to watch to the end and i'll be back to share my thoughts at the end of the video i was telling my mom the other day that i felt a lot of shame and embarrassment for being in my last relationship for as long as i was and getting pregnant and some of this other stuff um, and she asked me why that was, and I couldn't really figure out why. And as I was floundering to find the words, she was like, you loved him, right? I was like, of course. She was like, you meant every single thing that you said. And I was like, of course. And she was like, so what's your crime? What did you do that's so bad that you should feel so much shame and guilt and embarrassment? And it really put this in perspective for me. Cause she's right like maybe i loved too hard maybe i tried too hard maybe i tried for too long but at the end of the day my biggest crime is that i fell in love and i meant what i said and i really really worked for it to work out and it just didn't and i think about this a lot as i see this increase in content that like crucifies women for staying in these like less than ideal relationships with guys who just suck and i'm not talking like are awful human beings and put them in harmful situations i'm just saying like bradley who just isn't all that great and it's like okay girl you knew he wasn't that great and you stayed yeah dude she fell in love and she's trying her best and it isn't working out or it didn't work out and yet there's so much shame and guilt and stigma associated with that as if women are supposed to be this like perfect infallible creature who has all the self-esteem and self-worth in the world and leaves right away and can break her own heart and all this other stuff that's just completely unrealistic and i'm not saying that you know it doesn't take two to tango and that women are perfect beings who never make a mistake and when a relationship falls apart it's all a man's fault and blah, blah blah i'm not saying that but i'm saying you know as we put all of this shame and guilt on women and as i'm unpacking that in myself i have to find myself asking what did I do besides fall in love? And why is that such a bad thing? Why does that mean I am not worthy of grace and care and support anymore? Because I tried my best. I don't know. Like, as we shift towards a culture that does encourage women to prioritize themselves and their well-being and not their relationships, I don't think that should come in exchange of shaming people for falling in love and for trying in their relationships the like if the worst thing you did is fall in love and try and it didn't work out you tried and that's nothing to be ashamed or embarrassed about and that made me feel a little bit better so maybe it'll make one of you feel a little bit better hey beautiful people how y'all doing today your favorite girl again Mara david and i'm back again with another interesting video let me know your thoughts about this video down in the comment section do you think that it's wrong for you to shame a woman that stayed in a relationship for so long knowing that the relationship is abusive is wrong is toxic all because she's in love with him and people shouldn't shame her because she didn't do anything wrong about it let me know your thoughts down in the comment section i have interesting stitches to share with you all let's watch the stitches together and i'll be back to share my thoughts at the end of all the stitches increasing content that like crucifies women for staying in these like less than ideal I have to say that because of what this creator is talking about, how when women come on here and they talk about their relationships that they're in, where they're with guys that aren't treating them the best or their husband or their partner is doing something that's uncaring or unloving and how people kind of just tell them you should leave him. And if you don't do it, if you stay in the relationship or you want the relationship to work or because you love him that, you know, you're stupid and you get shamed and made feel guilty for that. And I do get what she's saying because I am someone who's in a long-term marriage that is not great, um, not with someone who's abusive or anything like that, but a relationship where I don't feel like I'm being treated the way I would like to be treated and I don't feel loved or cared for. And I do see content on here that 
seems to me, you know, we're talking about things like decentering men and women should be, you know, more independent and make better decisions for themselves and they shouldn't make, you know, a man the center of their life, etc. And on one hand, for me, that content actually has helped me. And there are also times when that content has made me feel kind of guilty and ashamed of myself. Like I do ask myself, like, why are you staying in this situation? You should be able to do better. What is wrong with you that you can't mm -hmm. strike out on your own or whatever? Mm -hmm. But the content has also done something kind of good for me. Which it's, it's made me think a little bit more about the situation, not so much from the marriage perspective and fixing the marriage, but more about going internally within myself and trying to look within me and asking myself those questions. Why are you in this situation? Yeah. Why are, why did you ignore these red flags? Why did you think that this was the best thing for you? I mean, those are actually really hard questions to ask yourself because a lot of times you, you may know the answer or you may not know that, or you may have an inkling about what the answer is. I've been in intense therapy for the last four months where I'm actually asking myself those questions for the first time. And what's happening is actually what I was always afraid of is I'm actually getting the answer to it. And the answer is the reason why I'm staying in this situation or I've been in these kinds of situations with men is because I don't like myself. I don't love myself. I don't care about myself. I'm not a priority in my own mind at all and loving this person, because I said the same thing, all, you know, all I did was love him, I just invested and tried so hard. Saying those things to myself and thinking that way was a way for me to kind of put all of this on the relationship and on him and take it away from myself because I don't want to think about myself. I don't want to be accountable to myself. I don't want to ask those, quest those questions to myself because if I did, the answer that I would come up with is the answer that I have, which is I don't like myself. And that's a really hard revelation to make. It is terrible to realize that that's the truth, that you don't like yourself because you have to admit why is that the case? And that takes you to a really, really painful, difficult thing, place that has absolutely nothing even to do with my marriage or my relationship. It has to do with really more deeper, painful things. And so, I'm kind of on the fence because I don't know if I would have gotten to this place where I'm at if not for a lot of this content that I see on TikTok, like about decentering men and all these things that I've learned. I don't know if I would have gotten to that point because for me, being able to decenter a man when men have really been the focus of my entire adult life means that now I'm going to have to fo I have to focus on myself. I have to work on myself. I have to ask myself questions and I don't want to do that. I don't even know how to do it, to be honest, but that is what I'm learning in therapy. And that is what I'm learning about myself. So while I do feel some guilt about where I've gotten to, I'm the guilt that I'm here, I do feel empowered more. And it is because of this content, because I feel like now I know what I have to do about it. And it's not so much focused on another person who I can't do anything about. It's focused on me, which I actually can do something about. I don't think guilt and shame is a motivator and that's not why I was, I've been motivated to get the help that I'm getting. I don't think it's a motivator. I don't think it's a positive thing, but I do think getting women to start focusing, taking focus off of men and putting it back into themselves, investing in themselves mentally and emotionally see, and, and, and really doing that work. I think that that is so important. That's really, I feel like how you love yourself, how you are able to liberate yourself and how you're able to get yourselves either out of or avoid mm -hmm. these really harmful and difficult relationships. I was telling my mom the other day that I felt a lot of shame and embarrassment for being in my last relationship for- Okay, sorry everybody, I just woke up. Please go back and watch the entire video. And if you're asking why I sound groggy, that's why. Um, what is it with you guys thinking that you're being feminist when you're being very misogynistic to women that you think have not saved themselves from things that are larger symptoms of like patriarchy and misogyny because the amount of people projecting entire narratives onto this creator which i 100 percent believe are motivated by um colorism and the fact that she's like pregnant um 
and using that as a way to be cruel using the whole you're male obsessed you need to decenter men you're just using single women as a way to be fucking cruel and misogynistic yourselves is very weird you guys are completely misinterpreting what she's saying and she's like this relationship didn't work out and i don't want to feel shame that i feel like is n not the same as the whole decenter men conversation we don't know what happened in her relationship we don't know how her relationships with her female friends are and seeing this be done especially by older women who i know have not always had this decent or men outlook is fucking weird it's very easy to say this will never happen to me this should have never happened when you are outside of that situation and not to say that every single thing can happen to everyone but it's just to say that y'all are like manipulating feminist ideals very broad watered down feminism i doubt any of y'all have fucking read as a way to be cruel to other women who have not ascended to that level of enlightenedness and making it seem like you're doing it on behalf of female friends single friends who just get used by women in relationships please get off your high horse because for like all yesterday just attacking this woman going back and forth with her it's insane about this a lot as i see this increase in content that like crucifies women for staying in these like less than ideal relationships with guys who just suck shift towards a culture that does encourage women to prioritize themselves and their well-being and not their relationships i don't think that should come in exchange of shaming people for falling in love mark them well people these are the new pick me's uh her and the other young black lady i'm going to stitch are just out and out telling lies and it pains me it pains me to have to say these things about another black woman and to have to take them to task but the things that you are saying are dangerous Feminists are not exiling women because they fell in love and there's not some plot against women who want to be in relationships because most of the women who do this work alongside me are in relationships. They are married and you don't feel shame and guilt because somebody exiled you and said that you weren't worthy as a woman. You feel that because you betrayed yourself. You did the things that we speak against all the time. You ignored obvious red flags and you continued on a path you knew was doomed to failure and then when it failed you said oh well i want super i want support i want love i want care i want attention and this is the kind of women who do not come around when they have a man oh they have a man their man their man their man and when they fall out with him then they want to come back and absorb all the you know friendship and feminism and so you think I'm not reading too much into it. Look at her tagline. You didn't disappoint feminism because you fell in love. You don't deserve exile and shame because you love hard and tried or because you love hard and are still trying. Your broken heart still deserves a safe space to rest. You hear that? Ladies, you're a safe space to rest. When she doesn't have her man, she wants to be able to lean on you. And this is what we're tired of. We're tired of women who don't put anything into community but want to use women as a backup plan when it's convenient. We do not want that. Because the thing is, in this life, you're going to get what you get. I have friends who are always here for me. And one called the other day and said she had had a, a rough patch with her man. It turned out to basically be a tempest in a teapot. But I still took that whole Saturday and I comforted and I gave space and I cleaned my house so she could come over because she's an awesome friend to me. She's always there for me. I'd have taken the whole week off if she needed it. I would have taken her on vacation if she needed it. The reason people aren't showing up for you is because you disappeared when you had a man. And this is the same minimization that men do. And it's really pissing me off. What was my big crime? I fell in love. No, your crime, if you want to call it that, is that you went in eyes wide open, ignoring all the red flags. And I'm sure you asked advice from everybody around you. And they all told you, this is a very bad idea. It's going to end badly. And when you went ahead against their advice and did the thing that you knew was going to end badly, you don't just want support. Now you want resources, even if it's just emotional resources. But I'm sure it's a lot more than that because you spoke of being pregnant. Now you want the community you didn't pour into to supply the place of the man who is not there that you chose over everything. And women are tired of being asked to be your backup plan, to be the surrogate father in the name of love that they had no share in. You love this stranger so well that you abandoned everybody else. And then when it doesn't work out with him, you expect them to have unconditional love. When do they get love? She fell in love and she's just trying to do her best. Yeah, by a man. When did she do her best by her friends? When did she do her best by her family? Because now she's coming back and asking us to take on all these additional burdens. And I just, that never gets talked about and it's not fair. 
but we're straying from the main thesis of what I wanted to discuss, which is this one right here. What Jordan is discussing about the shame and embarrassment that is imposed on women who actively try to make partnership with men work out and what Alexia was discussing about how telling single women who are seeking partnership to decenter men is not a comparable placeholder for active partnership lives to me in the world that I have just called companionship nihilism which is the belief and framework that intimate, romantic, equitable partnership with men is impossible and thus not worth seeking out. Uh, when it inevitably fails, it's ultimately because of their own naivety. So once again, this is a complete lie. This woman has intentionally misrepresented what decentering men is about to shore up her own shaky point. I was going to be nice, but I don't feel like it because this kind of thinking is offensive and it's dangerous to the real work that we do to promote women being safe and happy and living their best lives. But let me just start empirically by proving this is a lie. First of all, many of the women who do this work are married or partnered. Mel Hamlet is married and she talks about her wonderful husband on her channel all the time. As a counterpoint to the abusive relationship she tells you to avoid that she was in before she met this man. Jerice yeah. is in a relationship. Texas Ferry is in a relationship. Jessica Valenti is married. These women are not trying to keep you from having a man. They want you to have a good man. But the women who are equitably, happily partnered know the only way to get that way is by decentering men. You tried to obscure what that meant, so let me set the record straight. Decentering men just means you're not making all of your decisions based on what men want or think. That you, your desires, and your goals are now the center of your life. And I think at some point we've all lived that scene from waiting to, you know, waiting to exhale where Savannah asked Robin, when you meet a new man, don't you feel like you're straining not to come across too ditzy or too down, too bubbly or too stoic? You know, we've all tried to play the cool girl. For too long, women have been groomed by society to allow men and getting male attention to be the primary thing in their lives. And no matter what else you accomplish, people's first question is, well, do you have a man? Mm -hmm. And we're stepping away from that paradigm. That is all. Good relationships are great, but not at the expense of who you are as a person. Mm -hmm. Secondly, as you can see, these women are in good relationships. So it's clearly been exposed as a lie that the women who talk about decentering men are shaming women for being in relationships. We're speaking out against toxic and abusive relationships. What the original person, Jordan, called shaming women for working on relationships or being in active partnerships with men is often just women justifying abuse and mistreatment. And we see it often on this app. That's what she's talking about. Women coming to us with their tales of woe about how their husbands smack puzzles out of their hand or give them gifts that he locked up in iron bars. And we say, this is abusive. This is treatment your partner should not be inflicting on you. And then they go running back to the terrible man and say that we're just jealous because they have somebody. Work in a relationship does not involve overcoming cheating, toxicity, weaponized incompetence, inequity, or disrespect. And you must not follow us because we talk about good relationships all the time as a standard for others to aspire to. Yeah. But this whole line of argument is just the new wave of pygmishas. They're too smart to say that they want a man at any cost or to blame us for teaching women for having self-esteem or standards, even though Jordan did try. So instead, they claim that we're just trying to drive a wedge between men and women. Where have you heard this before from the men who want you to settle claiming that we're stoking a gender war? Be so quick to leave their relationship, not understanding that you're going to get with somebody else and they're going to do something you don't like to. Keep going through that never ending cycle of going from person to person because you're expecting somebody that's perfect. That is bullshit and everybody knows it. But by intentionally downplaying the very real reasons women are leaving because of abuse and toxicity, this man tries to make it seem like you're never going to find anything better. Instead of men doing the work on their yeah, problems, yeah. they are rolling out these arguments that make it seem like, oh, well, everybody's got a problem. You're looking for something too much. You want perfection. No, we don't want perfection. We want equality. We want companionship with an actual person who wants to be in a relationship. You just know this kind of man thinks that the trials and tribulations of a relationship include a man cheating on you. And he has dusty energy. But that's all the other side has. They're telling you to settle, that you can't do better, that all men are the same. Actually, decentering men, women, we are more positive towards men. We're saying there are good men that you don't have to manage like they are children. There are men who want to be active partners with you, who want to treat you well, and you should hold out for one rather than settling and being miserable with a man, baby. You have to do everything for but now we come to the heart of the matter. Because let's say that there were only two options, even though there are more. Let's say the only options were being with a bad male partner or being alone. These women have already told you they'd rather be with a bad partner. 
They have said that they can't take being alone. That partnership or companionship is an itch that can't be scratched by any other means. We know that they're going to be left behind because women who are decentering men have already acknowledged they would rather be alone than have a bad partner. And that's the first step to getting a good partner. Because you know you can walk away from bad circumstances that these women are staying in. They would encourage you to do the same because they don't believe in themselves. They don't have the ability to enjoy their own company and sit in silence. And they think they can't do better and that something is better than nothing. They don't have the faith it takes to wait for a good partner. It's really giving, I'm not like other girls, I'd rather be with the boys energy. Because they already said out of their mouths that their friends aren't enough. They're right about one thing. Our message is not for this kind of woman because she has to have a man at any cost. And if so, she will endanger you to have one. This is the kind of woman who'll tell your secrets to her man. This is the kind who's not going to believe you if something happens or if he makes a pass at you. What's he going to do if he's accused of something by another woman? Because she has to have a man. Finally, the women who decenter men know that their individual good marriages do nothing against the system of patriarchy as a whole. I'm sure there are millions of happily married women in this country, including my own mother. But did it stop men from passing the current laws against abortion and birth control? Being in a good relationship is not the finish line, nor does it absolve you from consciousness, political and social. There's still work to do to protect women as a whole, and that's what you were never interested in. Like and follow for more. As we put all of this shame and guilt on women, and as I'm unpacking that in myself, I have to find myself asking, what did I do besides fall in love? And why is that such a a bad thing why does that mean i am not worthy of grace and care and support anymore i genuinely and in good faith want to tell you why this doesn't actually work but hear me this if any of y'all find it appropriate to go to this woman's page and harass her i will cut you off fucking embarrassing do not do that do not do that. because i'll be damned if the same people following me are the same people leaving hate in a pregnant woman's comments for any fucking reason i'll be fucking damned okay so with that being said Here's why this like sounds really good, but doesn't actually work in practice. Number one, I'm just going to be frank and honest with this one. It's exhausting. It's really exhausting as a women based and women centered community or even just a friend group. It's really annoying and it's a really big bummer when you have that one friend who is with a man who sucks. The only way that you would continue dating a man who sucks and dating a man who is not good for you to the point of, you know, falling in love with him and all that is because you center men. It's very simple. So that plus a women-centered community doesn't work as not only are you centering the man, men are also taught to center themselves. And so what happens is you end up needing a lot of resources because men will take attention in any form that they can get it. Especially men can tell from far away that they just suck. Those are men that operate on attention. They operate on attention. They operate on control. They operate on abusing your goodwill. And you combine that with a women-centered community. What's going to happen is this man is by proxy going to abuse their goodwill by abusing your goodwill. And that is very harmful to the community. It exhausts resources that have been used for, frankly, more important things than a bad decision that you made knowingly. Does that make sense? Like this, if you knew the man sucked, if you knew there were red flags and then you still went, you still centered him, you centered men, you centered finding a man and you went after him. That means you are no longer woman centered because you're not even centering yourself, right? As Cecilia Regina said very poignantly in her video, you're upset, you're hurt because you betrayed yourself. You didn't just betray yourself. You betrayed women. You betrayed the centering of women and you favored the centering of men over that as you were centering men so much that you were willing to take scraps from one. Meanwhile, turns out you've had a whole amazing community of women there all along that you didn't have to beg for scraps from, that you could have had for support this entire time. It's just not fair, you know, to go off and center a man and then come back and want to be centered in a space where you didn't even center other women or yourself. That's exhausting. It's exhausting because the truth is it's probably going to happen again. Because the core issue is not you needing community or you coming back or you falling in love or anything. The core issue is that you still center men in your life because otherwise you would never have settled for scraps from a man. So the first point is women who center men, they do just that. They center men, but then they want to come back and benefit from woman centered communities where they want to come back and say, oh, just because I'm a woman, I deserve the support. So now you want to be centered as a woman. Just prior to that, you were trying to center a man that you knew wasn't good for you. It just doesn't add up. It just doesn't make sense. Point 1B is that this prevents the other women in that women-centered community from decentering men. As we say, you're only as strong as your weakest link. And truly the weakest link in a women-centered community is a woman who centers men because she's missing the entire point of the community and the community is not central to her. What's central to her is men and the community to her is a backup. And that's where the problem really happens because you can't be Mm woman-centered. 
And the reason it's important to have women-centered communities is because our world is male-centered. So these communities are a direct rebellion of that, and they're very important to have. So we can't have women in there that are contorting themselves to fit into the male gaze, meanwhile everybody else is trying to decenter men, because it prevents that from being possible. Yeah. Second reason why this doesn't tend to work was summed up really well at the beginning of somebody's TikTok video where they were just like listing their controversial opinions and they said that, you know, anytime I see a woman making a bad decision, I'm just sure that there's a man somewhere in that equation. That, in other words, if you see a woman at the scene of a crime, you're not done digging yet. Like, keep digging. Like, there's a reason why she's doing this, like, crazy thing, and it's probably because of a man. Simply, that's because when women decenter men, they don't tend to go out and try to do harm upon anybody. There becomes very little to fight with your friends about. There becomes very little to sort of like stress about. Mm -hmm. There becomes very little to really like get your panties in a bunch about, honestly. There's a man involved because men thrive so much on attention and because they have very few places to receive validation from. A lot of them will abuse women as a means of getting that validation of like, you're a man, you control somebody, you have power. Women are so taught to receive validation from the male gaze. Until they start being able to decenter men, they will ignore themselves and their own instincts and they'll ignore their own well-being. They'll ignore the well-being of other women in order to contort into and fit into that male gaze. Mm -hmm. And that's why other women don't like them. It's not because of any like sinister reasons. It's not because you're so sexy and all the guys want to look at you. It's because women who have learned to decenter men from their lives, they don't want to hang around other women like that because they literally don't want men to always be the center of attention. Yeah. Because a lot of the times, the way that these women dress, act, and want to be perceived is based on the male gaze, yeah. which women who are decentering men want nothing to do with. Thirdly, I find it interesting that this creator mentions like I we should be able to come back to to return to this female community and receive support. My biggest question is why did you leave? Because if you had a good man, he would have been helping you invest in that community. There is absolutely nothing that my husband won't do for my community. Be that my parents, my extended family, be that my girlfriends, be that, you know, somebody I just met. But being married hasn't kept me from being able to invest in all sorts of community that my husband supports my involvement in. Instead of staying true to the community that you now want to come back and pull resources from, you stay true to a man. And where's his community that you poured into? They probably took his side. So that's all I'm saying. When a man is around, then you want to censor him, even if he sucks, even if he has red flags. Part of those red flags means clearly separating you from your community. I've had quite a few friends get pregnant by men who suck, men with red flags, men that these women went back and forth, you know, from their female community of support and saying, no, I'm going to break up with him, I'm going to dump him, and then back to centering the man, and then back to the community, and then back to the man, and then they come back, and there's a child involved now. They're pregnant, or they come back with the child, or they had to leave this man because he wouldn't help with the child because he became abusive. Not only is that dangerous for you as the woman in the first place, like, that's one of the reasons why we discourage, you know, messing around with men that you know exhibit red flags and that you know suck, because these are the real-life consequences for women. They're much more than the consequences that men get to suffer. And not only that, but it's rarely the man's tribe that steps in and takes care of this child. You know, unless the woman is like literally like unwell or like runs off or something like that. It's rarely the man's tribe that steps in. Women who kind of think in the same way as this original, you know, creator, where it's like, you know, I knew he was terrible for me. I knew he just sucked, like he's not a good guy. Um, but, you know, I wanted to fall in and I wanted to have that. And now, you know, I want to come back and I want to be part of the community. And it's kind of like, well, there are women who need legitimate help. Like, they don't know that they're being abused. Maybe they have a baby and their husband, like, passed away. Like, these are the things that we sort of cultivate community around. What we also don't have is extra resources. You know, we're already running on fumes because you know, most women already have, especially in America, already have such limited time. Because they're working 40 hours a week. They only get two weeks off a year. Sick days are hard to come by. So you really already have very limited, you know, time. And time is... A big resource mm -hmm. and so for me if i'm operating in a woman-centered community the last thing that i want to do is have to give up those resources for something that was a calculated decision on that woman's part say i see that this man sucks but i'm just going to continue on my merry way and see what happens i think the most discouraging part of that video was that it seemed like this woman was kind of standing beside this opinion of like no i should be able to go out there and pursue a man that i know is not good for me and then i should be able to come back into the welcoming arms of my women only community so you haven't decentered men because again, if you were decentering men, you wouldn't settle for scraps from men. You would center yourself and you would do what's good for you. And none of that is good for you. So I guess that's what I'm saying. Like these resources should be for women that are just really in need. Like pregnancy with a, a man who sucks is preventable. I think that women want to decenter men so much that they don't even want men to be centered in their communities by proxy. Because that is what happens when other women don't decenter men. Men become the center of women only communities and we don't want that.
Just let this be a lesson on why you should decenter men because it affects not only your life, it affects the integrity of the communities that we have built for ourselves as women. Not all women think the same way. Some women still center men, which hurts other women by proxy. That's why this doesn't work. That's why this is not a good model to implement. It may sound good on paper, but it's just not the best use of our time. As we're trying to implement feminism, as we're trying to decenter men, this is just simply not a good use of the community's time. If you want to center men, then stick beside that. And if you want to decenter men, then really decenter them. I'm married and I decenter men, and my husband encourages that, and he tries to decenter men in his own life as much as possible. Be decentering men is for everybody. Men should have never been centered. We are all human beings. Like, if anyone should be centered, it's humanity or nature or the universe or whatever. Why are we centering one gender over another? I don't know. That's what women only communities are saying no to, like loud and clear. But I just want to emphasize how much I'm willing to go into this woman's comment section and block you fuckers by hand. Anyone that wants to leave hateful comments in her section, I will go in there and I will block you. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you follow me or don't follow me. You won't have access to my content. If you have used this discourse as an opportunity to pile onto a black pregnant woman, mark my words, you will find yourself unable to access my content. If that means anything to you, let it mean something to you. If it doesn't mean anything to you, good for you. I don't care. It means something to me and I will go to great lengths to find you. Be a good person, please. I love you. Godspeed. Wow, what an interesting video very interesting if you did enjoy just what i did let me know your thoughts down in the comment section like the video comment suggestion anything just you know do something in the comment section <laughs> anyways talking about women that you know the first creator was saying that why do people that create the century men content come for women that are just in love with men and decide to stay in a relationship just for the relationship to work? You are staying there for it to work because they are in love. Why do they shame them and make them feel guilty for just being in love? Because <clears throat> there's nothing wrong with being in love. What is your take? Hmm? For me, I feel like First of all, you cannot advise somebody that is in love in a relationship, knowing that she can see the red flag and everything. You can't really advise them to do something because they they see you as the enemy. They see you as, okay, I have a man, at least I'm in a relationship. You're not in a relationship. They just see you as a hater. So when you want to advise somebody in love, then they see, even when they are seeing the red flag, they ignore it because they don't care. So far they have a man they don't care so if then you're already in that relationship with with a man and you can see that this man is toxic you can see that you are not loved in that relationship you can see a lot of red flags in the relationship you can see that this relationship is, is going to scatter you know that sometimes you've been in a relationship with somebody you can already tell that this is not going to work you know that it's not going to work you have seen the way this man is treating you that it's not going to work but you're still staying there because you are in love. It just doesn't make sense to me. You ignoring a lot of things. You're ignoring a lot of maybe you've seen. Like it's not like you don't know. You've seen. No, there's, there's some people that don't know. They don't even know that whatever the partner is doing is bad. Probably they they, are, they, they don't really know. But you you know that it's not going to work. But you're staying there because because you're in love and you're trying to work things out. It doesn't make sense to me. Like, why are you just like you're wasting your time? Just the way this, oh, most of the ladies that stitched the video saying that you are centering your life around this man. Because if you if you really like yourself, if you choose yourself, if you love yourself, you won't stay in a relationship that you know that doesn't benefit you. You won't be in that relationship that you know that is toxic, that doesn't have. Any benefit that you you clearly see that this thing is going to end, you will leave that relationship. Or better still, the same time, and sometimes I do say that sometimes leaving a relationship might be very difficult. But even while in that relationship, you can dissenter men. Because the moment you start dissentering men in a toxic relationship, while you're in the relationship, at the point, your brain will click and you don't know when you are just going to walk away from the relationship. But first of all, start to decenter men. Do not center yourself around them. And crazy content of decentry men does not mean that you cannot be in a relationship. I've discussed this over and over again. We've made videos about this that some ladies were like, uh, 
women that talked about the sedentary men, yada, 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 we all need men. You can't tell us not to be, not to be men. Nobody's telling us to be with men. Nobody's telling us to marry men. Nobody's telling us to, you know, you can do whatever you want to do with your life. But because from the onset, women have been taught to center all their lives around men. Anything we do is to please men. Oh, you are doing this for your man. Oh, my man, my man, my man. Oh, my man, this, my man, that. With any conversation you're having with a person that centers herself around man, is all about a man. Like, it's very annoying. So, we can actually have our lives and decenter this man. And the moment you see a woman that she doesn't center herself around a man, she's different. She's free. Conversation, like, you will even want to be friends with those kind of women because you will love them because they love themselves. They don't center their lives around their man. It doesn't mean that they don't have a man. So if you're saying that you're in a toxic relationship, you clearly see that this marriage or relationship that I'm in is toxic and you're still there just because you are in love. Do you really love yourself? You're in love with somebody that do not love you back. Because if he loves you back, he will always try to, he will want to also make you work. You are the one trying to make you work. If he is trying to make you work, probably the relationship will be going to scatter. But you are the one trying to make you work, he's not trying to work. Definitely, you don't even love yourself. So, what are you even saying? <laughs> Sometimes I just see some of these videos, I'm like, in fact, I don't even know what to say anymore. I feel like most of the stitches they said, a lot of things that make sense to me and I'm in support with in fact almost all but not all anyways let me know your thoughts about this video down in the comment section I would really love to hear your thoughts again down in the comment section and thank you all so much for all your support your love for everybody that always tries to you know engage in my videos I see you all and thank you so much I'll see you all in my next video don't forget to like subscribe and turn on the post notification bell and i'll see you all in my next one bye